And welcome today, fellas, to our uh, football edition show with some uh, great Arlington County high school football coaches and one retired coach who moved down to Florida to swim in his pool all day, all night. Yeah. First, let me give a quick introduction to uh, the 269 all-time wins coach at Yorktown High School, Bruce All right. Hanson. All yes, right, sir. how you doing? I'm glad yes, to be here. Yes, hey. yes, right? I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> also, from, from the central part of uh, Arlington, the Washington, <laughs> it's not Lee anymore, Washington Liberty Generals wow. head coach Josh Shapiro. What right up, Josh? Yes, sir. Then down down the south side, I think it is, is I think it was his seventh year at, at Wakefield. Yes, sir. Mr. Wayne Hogwood. Yes, sir. Wakefield in the house. Yes, sir. Yes. And the guy in the middle. No introduction. <laughs> <laughs> the all-time legend of Arlington. Crooked ass cop. I mean, uh, <laughs> football coach. Hey, what year did you coach at Wakefield, Files? From uh, 91 to 96, assistant. And then 96 to 02, uh, hey. Okay, okay. Ron Files, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah! <laughs> welcome, gentlemen, welcome. So we just want to get you guys' opinion on how things are going. First of all, you know, I have to start off with, you know, all you guys on here definitely have looked up to and watched and followed your careers. Um, but no one better than Bruce Hansen, um, who yeah. I had an opportunity to play against. And back before recruiting was going on, Bruce Hansen tried to recruit me out of Williamsburg when I was <laughs> and tried to get me to come to Yorktown, but I was slated to go to Washington Lee. But I, I truly wished I, I would have had an opportunity to play for Bruce Hansen. But at the same time, I am uh, in awe to be alongside and watch him continue doing the things he's been doing. Coach Hansen, just want to give you a few moments, and I know you don't talk much about yourself or anything like that. You and your program speak for itself. But how long have you been coaching in, in Arlington County or, or overall? And just give us a couple of highlights real quick. Well, you, I mean, you, you guys all know I'm older, right? so <laughs> I guess I can say it. Um, yeah, I, I, this, but this would be, if, if we get this season going, this would be my 49th year of coaching. Wow. Damn! I started, at, uh, I started at Wakefield in 1972. So, um, and I've been in your town, how many years? This would be my 36th. Wow. wow. I'm, I'm hoping it'll be 37. I mean, 36 or 37, which one it is. I, you know, it's going to be tough to get off the ground, but I'm just hoping that we can get football off the ground this year. Absolutely. And, and we'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, start down, like Coach said, in the central part, my man Josh Shapiro. Josh, give us a little insight on, you know, how long you've been coaching and all of that good stuff as well, too. Well, thanks for having me, Tony and, and Buck. And uh, it's, it's great to be beside uh, – uh, Coach Hanson and Coach Hogwood, and I uh, hope we uh, have, we're probably going to have some pretty colorful discussions today and some topics of conversation, and uh, Files, you know, he, he served on uh, on my staff. I think sometimes I worked for him uh, <laughs> for, for uh, 11 years, so. 11 you know. years? Wow. Uh, man, yeah, that's why my hair looks like Tony's right now. <laughs> <laughs> I grew my bush back. Hey, speaking of corona, I thought I was doing bad with the hair, but hey, wait a minute. Um, so I came down, I, I came from uh, New York, and I came down to Arlington in, in 2003, and um, I uh, started out teaching at Kenmore Middle School and then um, was surplus. actually. The enrollment went down, so I went to WNL in 2005, was an assistant for two years, and then in 07, I was uh, fortunate enough to take over the program, and I've been there. Um, this will be upcoming 14, year 14 for me. Okay. All right. And then uh, my man, Hogwood, who is at the school that I'm at and was very excited that uh, Coach Hanson fired him from your – oh, my fault. He didn't fire him. <laughs> <laughs> my fault. But we, we just were so happy to have a, 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 a football mind. And you know, a lot of people don't know Wayne Hogwood, man, but a genius uh, as a football coach. And we're happy to have him. He's really changing the program around at Wakefield. Hogwood, give him a little bit of insight about some things you've done, my man, and, and how long you've been coaching and where you come from. I, I appreciate y'all letting me uh, be on this. I guess I'm the young guy, yeah. uh, a little bit of different different flavor. I've 
played four round files yep. as a great coach at Wakefield. And I got to coach with Bruce Hansen, not only play against him as a player, got to be on a part of his staff coming up and learn a lot about the game before I took over at Wakefield in 2013. And since then, I've got the opportunity to coach against him and Josh Shapiro for the last seven years now. So, you know, it's an honor, you know, being on this panel with all these guys, learning from them and getting a chance to be their peer and colleague at the same time. And so I'm just, just blessed to be here. And I'm hoping that we get a chance to crack this season off because uh, I got to I think I got a chance to beat Bruce Hansen this year. So, <laughs> so hey, we need to play hey, this season. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm wait, let me intervene real I'm quick. Because if I look at this screen, I think start everybody on, on the screen has said the same thing every year about Bruce Hansen. It's true. <laughs> and, and Bruce Hansen has given us all the same line, like, oh, yeah, this is your year. Not going to happen. No, not going to happen. <laughs> here, like, we're going to beat him. Oh, Lou Lou he, oh, he's, a, he's a hey. disciple of Lou Holtz at William and Mary, and he looks like Mac Brown from UNC. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I, I did a little bit of homework before the show, and I called up a reporter that I'm real close with, and uh, he told me, he said, that uh, when Ron Files was coaching at Wakefield, he said a lot of coaches have said a lot of things to him, but Ron Files said something to him that it will stick with him to this day. And I said, Coach, I mean, Dave Fasanoli from the, uh, the Sun, what did Ron Files say to you? He said, I just want to beat Bruce Hansen's ass so I can retire like I'm supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that never happened, Coach Files. No, no. We, we, we got him once. I was a new Jack in 95. Remember Bruce, 95? Uh, yeah. Ames Jasper. We were, we were one and nine. I thought we had <laughs> Yeah, to I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> we had, oh. we, I thought we had you. You know you have. And I swear to God, he fired everybody in that team. playing our ass or something. I don't even know. <laughs> Uh, I bet you you fired every coach and every player from that damn team. Yeah! He was mad in the whole had a quarterback issue. I know that. He had a quarterback issue. Yeah, it was a Saturday afternoon in the rain. Right? That's how long it been. Yeah. It was hot. It was something like that. Yeah. yeah. It was a hot Saturday. And we had a thunderstorm. And you wanted the game because you thought we were going to kick our ass. And I said, you had Jonathan Roberts was your running back. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan. Jonathan the running back. And uh, we beat you, and we party till the next Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let me ask you: After you beat them that year, did you win any more games after that? Yeah, we uh, beat WNL. You were one and nine and beat WNL. Come on, now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll be honest: you had a pretty good streak going against Washington Lee back in the day. Yeah. I think it was was it Josh Debro that broke the streak? WNL beat us in '95, right? And Josh, what year did you beat me in that? In the playoff game. Uh, uh, 2010. 2010. 2010, Josh, you got to be good in the playoff game. But that, that was the playoff game, correct? Yeah. yeah. That and was I, the I following will, week, back to back. Yeah. Back I, will, to back. I yeah. will say this. Being an alumnus of WNL and playing for WNL, I never had an opportunity to beat Yorktown. I always smashed us. And that was a goal. We always wanted to beat Yorktown. Like Coach Hanson said, they went 1-9 that year, but they beat WNL. Their season was complete, so they're fine. But, Josh, I will tell you, the internet and everybody blew up. That night, you guys beat Yorktown. You couldn't believe how many alumni were so happy. Coach Hans, you know I love you, man, but I'm a WNL guy. That uh, night, it's fun. It's fun. It, hey, listen, it was my guys I played with Corey Bird's song, and we were texting each other like, "Yo, WNL beat Yorktown!" Like we partied in the streets when they we because it never happened, Coach Hans. We could never beat you. Well, it didn't matter who was the well, coach. Josh, Josh did an unbelievable job coaching up against us, man, the second time around. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, was, it was special. It was special. Was, was, was Ron Files your defense coordinator that year you beat him? Was he still doing the uh, 11 man rush? No, no, cover? <laughs> I think it was, and no cover on the back. All we were having was Josh, he, he, he had about 18 guys blocking the container. Who was your, the good running back you had, Josh? Anthony, Anthony Taylor. 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 Yeah, Anthony Taylor. Yeah. He like put eight guys on our safety. Yeah. They sent everybody to block the safety. Unfortunately, I was the defensive coordinator in that game for your. Oh, that's right. That's oh. right. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, I knew we had you in the second quarter because our quarterback, who couldn't throw a forward pass with a spiral, he rolled out right, and you guys were bringing him down, and he threw a Hail Mary about 38 yards across the field into a wide open receiver who hadn't caught a ball all year and ran for like 20 yards. And I looked up, I said, okay, we got the football gods with us tonight. We're going to be yeah. all right. 
So, hey, Wayne, who were the who were the two safeties we had? One of them got the, who was it? The, the Baileys? I think it was the yeah, Baileys. The, the, the brothers. Yeah, yeah. The one of, the twins. One of them got sick. One of them got the sick and refused to play. He was sick too. He was like, I can't play without my brother. Uh, <laughs> wow. Well, well let, yeah. me, let me ask all you guys just real quick. Now, I know you guys been coaching. You've got all you guys have had some great running backs if you guys have coached. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you had to give me your top three running backs that you've coached in your program, what 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 names will be out there? Coach, Coach Hanson, guys? Coach Hanson, stay away from this question, my man. <laughs> stay away from this question. <laughs> Trust me, stay away from this question. Okay, let, I'll, 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 start, I, I'll start with Josh Shapiro. Okay, so hands down, the best running back, pure running back, was Anthony Taylor. He he had the best forward lean. Um, he had good speed, good vision good balance. Uh, so he, he was hands down our purest running back. Our next, I would say, Charlie Fuller, because he was most Charlie. explosive, hard to tackle, um, lightning quick. Um, you know, not a natural running back, but an athlete. And then our third guy for running back, uh, you'd have to go with Seneca just based on number oh, of yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the fact that he signed, uh, he played at Liberty university there under turner gill so i mean those three guys uh, were our best three okay right, let's go to you ron files uh easily the legend uh raymond thomas raymond Look, Ray raymond thomas that was a grown man playing high school football and um we had 160 pound lineman when i got there and he ran for 2,000 yards and between the five linemen i think they benched 300 pounds all together um <laughs> The, the, the second one, Randy Pelham. I remember Randy Pelham? Yeah, Randy yeah. Pelham. Randy, number 22, Randy Pelham. And then um, Chris McGill. I remember Chris McGill? Danny. Yeah, Chris McGill. And, uh, yeah, but, but Raymond Thomas is, is is by far, I think he's the best running back in Arlington. Next to Andre Yates, the best running back in Arlington. See, this, this is why I told Coach Hanson to stay away from this, man. Hey, because that's, I'm that's telling why we're going to no save the best for last. We're, hey, we're going to go with Hogwood next. Yeah, go yeah. Hogwood. <laughs> I can't wait to hear Hanson. Right. We're giving yeah, Hanson some time to think about there it. There you go. He's going to be in the doghouse no matter who he pick. I'm glad I don't got that problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had a short run seven years. I've had a couple good backs over Wakefield. I, the, the best one I've had so far, i got to say, is Leon Young. A guy that yeah. came out a couple of years ago, kind of helped put my coaching career in Wakefield on the map. We got our first uh, district championship, ran for over 2,000 for us. And uh, this past year, I had a young guy named Isaiah Meffert that came out of nowhere that was a hell of a football player. He'll be going to play down at uh, Washington and Lee College next year. So uh, those two guys definitely. And then I'm going to steal one because I got to be a coach, even though I don't coach him. I got to be a part of the MJ Stewart team over oh, there yeah, in Yorktown. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm not gonna, I'm gonna claim a little bit of MJ go Stewart Bucks. for me. There you go. Yeah, go Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach Hanson, man, listen. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm only gonna pick one, if, and then I'll tell you about another one. The best one is MJ, no doubt. I mean, you know, he's playing in the pros, and he could have played in the pros at running back for sure. And he yeah. was a safety for us. I mean, he was, you know, our record showed it, but he was the greatest. He got me a head coaching job. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't fire me when I had MJ. That's for yeah. <laughs> so. So, but the guy that I would, you know, the high school running back. If I had to take one, even maybe even over MJ, I don't think so. But it'd be close. It'd be a kid named Andre Yates that you mentioned. Yeah, Andre was special, and um, he had the best line ever for me. We played Lee in an, in an overtime game. They were pretty good that year. It was back in the early '90s, and uh, the the uh, the um, sports writer asked me what was my game plan for overtime. I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "What kind of sequence of plays are you going to run?" I said, "I didn't have any sequence of plays. I was going to give it to Andre four times, <laughs> and after the third time, he he scored." So wow. I didn't. You know, when you had Andre, he was the first down, and if you gave it to him three times, yeah, he he, he was good. He was good. But coach, I'm not going to get you in any kind of trouble because Yates was maybe a sophomore my senior year, and he was returning some punts. Uh, you know, he was, you can tell he was going to be the next great running back that Hanson always had. But I'm going to tell you right there, Coach Hanson, Jimmy. Jimmy Brown was a bad boy, man. Uh, uh, Jimmy would be up there. He Jimmy's was a bad boy, there. man. And I'm just speaking my error, of course, because yeah. you had every year seemed like you had a great running back come through yeah. every three to four years. Yeah. Well, and Jimmy I'm just speaking on my error. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of good ones, but yeah. you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Andre was special. Andre was special. That's good. Well, that's good. I'm gonna I'm keep you out of doghouse. You don't have to name anybody else. So. Oh, I'm not going <laughs> there. <We're> good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So segueing into that, you guys have been around a long time. I mean, Wayne, not as long, but you've been around the sport forever. Um, how has the game changed? And I know Coach Hanson can probably say because. Basically speaking on like Arlington, how has it changed throughout the years, uh, rules? Um, I remember Coach Hanson when I was playing, we hit every day except for uh, Thursday. And we practiced on Saturday and we tackled and we did everything. Now my understanding is you guys are hitting like once a week type of deal or whatever it may be. So if you can, you guys just chime in, how have things changed over the years with football? You want me to go first? Well, I think the biggest thing, there's two things really for me. So the first thing is, is, is believe it or not, it's huddle. You know, whereas yeah. everybody has can watch game all day long, every night. You can watch it at practice. It gets you more prepared, I think, than they used to. And second of all, you know, the offenses now are, you know, a lot more variety in offenses than they were back 10, 15 years ago. So I think that's the two big changes to me. And, and, and of course, a lot of people aren't hitting as much as they used to, that's for sure. Right. Well, I remember when I played coach, I wish they'd have threw the ball because I would have had more reception than I did. <laughs> That's for sure. We just handed the ball off to the damn fullback. I'm still mad at Musket for that. You had Musket as a coach. That was yes, fun. sir. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's a good one. <laughs> uh, Hogwood, how, or, or how's it change? How's things change? Well, uh, for me, you know, I think what touching on what Bruce said, the huddle aspect and more, the game is getting more mental more up top you know it's just not about who's bigger faster stronger no more because the guys are definitely working out still you're able to get more prepared mentally find guys with football iq and be more prepared watching film and you know your your game plan and those type of things you can really football is one of those sports where you know ain't no michael jordan you can't just give the ball to one guy and get out the way everyone got to do their job so the, the better prepared your team is as a whole then you know the the better you know the outcome is going to be for you. So watching film and all these aspects of everything has been great from a coaching standpoint, but it's also been a hindrance too because everybody's doing it now. Yeah. So ain't no advantage. You got to be doing it, or you you're not up to par. So, so Coach Fowles, when you coached it, was Huddle available? Oh gosh, no. We had to we had to first we had the VHS tape. VHS. Yeah. yeah. And then we used to you have to meet a coach in a secret play some Saturday morning. <laughs> And uh, if the coach didn't like you, I can't tell you, but coach, I'm on the punch out. Um, <laughs> did you meet him somewhere, especially when you had to go out to Fairfax? But I, I got to tell you, the, first of all, now football is basketball on grass. But uh, from the coaching aspect, the way we can relate to the kids to make them young men is totally different. The things I said, Wayne, you can attest to that as being a player. Um, <laughs> the best stories the, I still got. <laughs> <laughs> to, to get these guys ready for life. And, and, you know, and especially down at Wakefield during that time, we had a lot of kids that had different uh, disadvantages in life. So to relate to them, if I did that now, I'd be incarcerated for 15 years. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I tell you, the um, it's basketball on grass. And the only problem I have with huddle, it takes away the, when we used to, Rose, you can remember this, when we really had to study the film. And also took about the, but I used to tell Josh, you can look at a player, you know, the huddle can show you that, you know, you can circle it, the tendencies. But when you get to the field, and Bruce, you're the expert on that. You come the first day of a team's workout. You look at a player and you can say he's a football player. You didn't have to oh, look at huddle. Right. You know, like, you knew MJ. He was going to be playing not on Friday nights, not on Saturdays. You knew he was going to be playing on Sundays. You that's know, right. and that's the difference between the huddle and everybody plays mad in the huddle and you draw your plays from that. And uh, I just don't think it's, it's, it's coaching the way. I like to, to coach, but don't let people from the coach just getting after them, getting after them. Josh, what you got? Okay, for me, um, when I first started coaching, we were all in the huddle, um, and now it's it's just tempo. So the speed at which teams get plays off and the formations, which are, you know, things you constantly evolve to, empty formation. Uh, almost everybody lines up in, in some form of spread. So you need athletes out there. Um, you know, both sides of the ball. And then defensively, you've basically lost, you've created this hybrid type of strong safety that can play in the box or as a safety. Um, so, you know, the game's changed. There, there's very few teams that line up uh, with, with 21 personnel. And, you know, you don't see a lot of tight ends anymore. 
Um, Bruce, I know we attended a meeting where, the, where this coach put a tight end up who had 40-something catches, and we said, how the hell is he a, a tight end? He says, well, he's detached. And I, looked, <laughs> I looked at Bruce, and I said, well, that's called a slot receiver. So, I mean, you know, you, you don't even have an award anymore for a tight end position when you go to the district vote. Um, so the game is a satellite game. You know, it's played on the perimeter, and it's, it's tempo and, and uh, math. There's a lot of math in it. You know, you get up to the ball now and you count. You know, do we have an advantage number-wise in the box? If we do, it's a run. And, and uh, you know, uh, if, if the box is uh, heavy, you're going to throw the ball. So you go up with two plays. And, um, you know, the line blocks a, a run, and, and you wind up throwing a pass. And, you know, it's, it's a lot different than when it was uh, 15 years ago. Um, and also, if I may, the, uh, the contact, I mean, I'm, I'm with, I think, Bruce or, or Wayne, you, you know, said it. Tony, you mentioned it. We hit every day in practice. I mean, I mean you, we had tackle to the ground every day in practice. And, and now it's, you know, we follow the model of the pros and the colleges and, you know, Monday's your install day and, and, you know, some schools go full tackle Tuesday or period Tuesday and then everybody's pulling back Wednesday and Thursday. So, the, you know, it's – you tackle a lot of bags and, you know, you, you teach more about tackling now. Technique's important, obviously. And uh, there's a lot less contact in, 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 uh, in the practices. I love it. I love having the rivalry games, but at times I'm jealous because of you two guys because we get it south and north, man. We they come yes. it's like it's almost like we've done something wrong to their community. <laughs> and we get off the bus. It's like, wait, I don't even dislike you kids. I've right. never had an issue with either of your schools. It's yeah. like, what is going on? And, and, and Wayne, you are so right. And, and you know, we can tell them the opening game, South Side team. And, oh, okay, it's Wakefield. But the Yorktown week, oh, my God. We, we're up for 90 hours. Hey, that thing was preached into me. I'd never forget Zeus. You must got to beat the people you live with. There you go. You got to beat the people you live with. These are the people you're going to see at Boston Mall. That was the you, you remember that? <laughs> That's been going on for years, man, for years. I would love it. All right, so with that said, you guys know what the world we're facing right now with this uh, COVID-19. Um, and you guys are, are next, should I say, because Buck and I, we coach basketball, and our sport is in uh, November. You guys are coming up right now. If I'm not mistaken, right now, Coach Hogwood and I will be downstairs in the cage talking about 7-on-7. Seven seven. And, you know, Josh should be calling me about some uniforms for 7-on-7. Seven seven. So what are you guys doing right now as a program for your kids uh, through this pandemic? I mean, I guess I'll jump in there being a young guy, but – we're doing a lot of, you know, what this type of stuff, you know, trying to post videos through, you know, different outlets so they can still get workouts. I know I had a long meeting with my strength coach, Keith, in the building. He put our whole workout that we do in person on a video and modeled some of the exercises so the kids can be doing some of those reps and getting some of those things done at home. But you're still not there, camaraderie in the weight room, getting to work with your guys. So it's really up to the guys at this point how, how much of that internal motivation there is for them to go out and work knowing, hey, coach is not, you know, this is not reflective on playing time or those type of situations. So it's how much do they want it? How much are they going to go out and put the grind in by themselves when we're not allowed to do much at this time? As coaches, we can only put stuff out there, but there's rules and regulations on, you know, being in contact and how much we can do. We definitely can't, you know, go meet up and have a workout at the field. So, you know, we're putting out stuff so they can have access to it. But it's really about the, the players' motivation at this point and what they want to do to get to the next level. Josh, Bruce, Coach. Yeah, um, we've, we've posted um, a couple of videos from the NFL. They, they have a trainer working out with, like, an individual player, and it's all stuff you can do with that weight. So I've sent two of those out. Um, they're about 15 minutes long each. And to piggyback with Wayne, I, you know, I've got feedback, but I don't – um, really feel as though many players have, you know, taken advantage of it. I think so many of the kids are just, you know, kind of taken away, taken aback and almost depressed in a way like they don't think we're going to play and they're so in limbo that it's hard to, you know, uh, foster an environment that says, hey, let's get ready. Um, we've sent out 
a, a workout they've done for week for their third week, which is all kind of written up. They don't follow the computer as much as they just see the sheet and follow it. Um, and then I've had some meetings with some of the players, but that was just once. And we try to do most of the upcoming rising seniors. And that was just to kind of touch base, say hello, and, you know, see FaceTime and kind of get back to some normalcy of, as to just, you know, conversation. It really wasn't football. It was more like, how's your family? And we share some laughs and some stories and we talk about some things. And, you know, that was it. Well, yeah, well, we haven't done – we're really well, probably hurting for as much as we've done. But our strength coach, Evan Ruffner, sent out some workouts. And, um, and that's about it uh, that we've done. I've talked to a few players, you know, on, on text messages and, and uh, a couple guys on the phone. But um, the thing that we're missing the most is, you know, the guys getting out to the field and just throwing and catching the ball. And, and the, the guys, the first week that we were out, they were coming up to the field on their own. I was having, I wasn't out there, but I saw. A few. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there were a few guys out there, but the police came and kicked them off, and they're no longer on the field up in your town. So, I think it's really going to hurt. It was the, the best thing about the whole thing, though, for the for our team and everybody else is, everybody else is going to be struggling to find ways to to get better in the weight room and out in the field throwing and catching. That's, that's the benefit for Wakefield right now. Finally, no one else can work out. So they on our yes. level. Yes, yes. Straight you know, athletes, we might get them. Straight athletes. <laughs> <laughs> and, let, and, let me ask you, Ron. What, yes. what are you doing doing this COVID-19 workout? I mean, you look good. You look buff. You're like, you've been working out. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 25-yard pool swim, and I started walking uh, you know, from the post-cancer. So I started out with a, 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 a mile, and now I do about three and a half, four miles walking around. I get to see all the white gentlemen in their garage uh, <laughs> making doors and uh, building stuff. And uh, so, yeah, but it, it's been good for me health wise. But I got to tell you what happened down here in Florida. Uh, speaking of Bruce, when you talk about the police on the field, one coach actually got incarcerated. He actually told his team captain to get the kids. And then, of course, the team captain took, it was a good, Apopka High School, took the kid, got 80 kids on the field. Well, of course, that attracted troopers, helicopters, et cetera. So, of course, the captain said, well, the coach told us to get out of there. And they, we have a curfew down there, what we had till, till last week. And they put him in jail. They gave him a $2,500 fine. He was fired. And all for Fired? Football. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, down here in Florida, the, the football coach is not like, like you, Bruce, and, and Josh, when you guys teach also. The football coach is like the college coach. That's your gig. If you get fired, you got to go home to mama and say, hey, I ain't got no more job. So wow. it, it, it's a, yeah, it, it's a rough business here, and these guys are winning at all costs, and uh, yeah, but it, it's real different. But the, the the virus, especially at my age and my my stuff, it, I got to be really quarantined. I got to I got to take it easy, or else you guys be walking slow and singing low. <laughs> Wayne, I got a question for you, Wayne. Yes, sir. Being that you told us earlier that you you played for Coach Files and yes, I did. And you <laughs> coach underneath you coach underneath Coach Bruce Hansen. What's their what's the difference between their styles of coaching? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Well, first of all, okay. first thing I'm gonna tell you is they're two different sides of the ball. Even though they shouldn't be. Okay. They're both linebackers in real life. Wow. Bruce Hansen was a linebacker at William and Mary under Bobby Ross and all these coaches. And Ron Files is a linebacker slash jump out that ran through a police car door. Okay. <laughs> 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 but Bruce Hansen coaches offense now. He's Bruce has been running the offense at Yorktown because you know something he shared with me a long time ago. If you're the head guy, that's your responsibility. Because when when you lose the game and the reporters call in the middle of the night, you're the one that's got to answer the question. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And when I was at uh, Wakefield playing for Ron Files, Ron always ran the defense, and we you know it was probably why we had a couple offensive coordinators when I was there. A couple guys didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> But he was a, a defensive-minded guy and knew exactly what we should be doing defensively. And, you know, one of the best things ever as a coach now coming back, which is a true story, Ron Files told my mother I was going to coach at Wakefield when I played back yeah. in the day, and now I'm the coach. But uh, if we would have listened and followed directions and been more disciplined, we would have had a lot more success because the yeah. things that he was telling us in meetings back then are the same stuff I've been saying and other coaches have been saying for years. We just didn't do it. 
You know, so there's a lot of guys that will tell you, oh, maybe we weren't coached or we didn't watch film, all of that. that that's bullshit. And, you know, people just didn't do their job yeah. at the end of the day, you know. And, and it, you know, Wakefield at that time was a basketball school, so. Yeah, everybody wanted to hoop. That was more, which is why when I took over, the first thing I did was talk to you and Bentley. We got to get some of that basketball, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's what it was. You know, if we had guys back then that were committed to the football program the way they were committed to basketball, we would have had a hell of a run with the talent oh, yeah. that was in Wakefield yeah. High School. And, and, and I, I will say, Wayne, you and I have always had a great relationship with that. We've talked about because we shared players, and we have never had a situation where there was a guy that was just football. Just, if they play both, we supported both. And let me let me let me interrupt you for one second. I'm gonna put this out here just so it's out there because because I hear rumors all the time. Tony Bentley and I have had a great relationship forever. I have never ever had him not tell a guy not to play football. This goes around all the time. People are like, oh, Bentley don't want him to play football. No. When I first took over the job, Tony Bentley canceled basketball practice and had the whole basketball team come to the induction meeting for me as a coach so they could talk to me and see if they were interested in being on the team. And that's how I was able to get Mark Way Walton to come out and be our first yeah. wide receiver. So yeah. just to put that to bed, you know. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, Tony, take a lot of help. Tony, yes, sir. Tony, if you look at it, and Bruce, you try to job, all the great basketball teams at Yorktown, the year with uh, uh, 95, five, I think, with, with Bobby and Wakefield, the, the integral part of the team was a football player yeah, because of what they bought. And we can always say, guys, football makes you a better basketball, basketball player. player. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, these kids, everybody looks and thinks they're going to be everybody from AI to MJ. And they're going to get a scholarship at 5'7". But <laughs> if you look at all the teams from, from Bruce, when, when Yorktown won the basketball championship, all through the night, all your, all your Wakefield teams, and even Belgian uh, would tell you that um, those were the best teams. They were football players. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Sam, we had Sam Zanders at WNL who was a stud. A monster. Yeah, a monster. Stud. And he played basketball. He was our enforcer on the basketball team. And we yes. had like three or four Division One basketball players. But Sam was that guy that was boxing out, rebounding, doing all the dirty work. Yeah. That's where that football grit come from. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah. So let me see. So let me ask you guys this. I know we got a little stagnant for a second, but – how many on the panel think that we're going to start school on time? I'm praying. <laughs> I, I felt like it was a good, you know, they all the dates you hear about, things you read in the news, you know, May 18th, June, whatever. I thought we were in a good pace so far. But the more I talk to administrators, like my principal at schools and ADs and stuff, the more it's starting to worry me that they won't be prepared to open this thing up on time. So, you know, it's really going to hurt football, I feel like, more than any other sport because we are required to start so early to get the yeah. right amount of training, the right amount of preparation, the acclimation to pad. you got to have people. I don't know if people know, VHSL, you got to have a certain amount of practices before you can scrimmage and before you're allowed to play a competition and a game and all that. And we've got kids that, you know, are, are counting on some of these games to help them get to the next level. Yeah. You know, I don't know if the other sports have those same type of requirements, but if we're pushed back late, it's really going to hurt the football season. Oh, chances you've been coaching forever. You have you ever experienced anything like this? Oh no, definitely not. And you know, I, I mean, I just I keep saying that the only thing that's going to be good for us anyway is that every or from all the teams that, that prepare for the season is that everybody's starting the same. But I I got to go along with Wayne. I don't. I just don't know. You know how football is going to do it. Maybe they'll have a shortened season. You know, uh, like six game season or a district schedule season, something like that. And I've heard people talking about playing in the spring. I don't know how they would do that. I just don't know how they do that. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm not – I'm 50-50 on it. <laughs> well, let me ask you guys. Would you guys be willing to play, let's say, from October until January, the cold months, and cutting into the basketball and they push everything back? Personally, I, I think that's realistic. And I hope, I hope everybody does that And with the premise of, you know, it's going to impact everybody's seasons. Right. So, you know, you, you reduce the number of games you play in basketball and then you reduce the same thing in, in, in spring sports. Baseball is, uh, comes to mind because you generally play everybody twice or, you know, there's holiday tournaments and such. You just got to cut back. But, yeah, I mean, Buck, to answer your question, I hope we, I hope we go back to school mid-September and I hope we find a way to play football from October to, you know, right up to Christmas break and then you come back from Christmas and 
Tony and Buck, you hit the hardwood floor. Right. Yep. And we got to yep. do something. Football is like the only sport with no AAU, no travel, no, you know, yeah, no other yeah. outlet. Yeah. Uh -huh. so everybody else can play in the summer or find some way to, you know, we don't have that. Right. And, and the and gate. You know, Willis? Good. Well, the gate, you know, yeah. athletic directors, the counties, you know, schools rely on a lot of that money to fund other sports and to, you know, help revenue and such. And, uh, you know, I know when we play each other, that's a big gate for the county. You know, the three of us, when we mix, that that's – that's a lot of uh, proceeds that go to benefit everyone. But, but Tony, I can tell you, uh, whatever the beach decides, uh, when they do the state vote, when football is going to start and all that, it's whatever that the beach does because of the athletes, et cetera, and going into basketball track, that's, that's that'll be the votes. Yeah. And then you got to remember, there's no revenue coming in for the state, so they're going to cut back. Like Bruce was saying, there'll be a you know, short schedule, et cetera. Traveling will be – cut back because you guys are all teachers. You'll see the, the budgets will be shot to hell. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was I was just I was I was looking at a text. I'm sorry I had a text and somebody asked me to ask Ron Files. Uh in 1987 87 87 you were on a show called The Price is Right? Yes. <laughs> 97, 97. Oh, 97. Okay. 97, 97. 97. Can you tell me about your experience on the prices, right? <laughs> you know what, Buck? <laughs> hey, you might. What, what we trying to do, bro? We might as well get you to talk about because we got footage of it. So we're gonna put it on the show. <laughs> we're gonna put it on the show. So we want to hear you talk about it and, and figure out how you couldn't put the X where it was supposed to go. Oh man. Well, first of all, you, you got to get. I went to LA. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm a comedian. They gave my smile. They said, man, you got to go to Price is Right. I knew nothing about the Price is Right. So you got to stand on line eight hours. I pass the test. I do some, hey, I'm Ron from Virginia. Ho, ho, and all that. Well, they call me Ronald Files, And my wife at the time hits me at the thing says, hey. She bumps me, and I run down. And, well, anyway, Bob Barker, I win. At the third time, I win. After cussing, they, they bleep me out on CBS because, you know, I hate to lose. <laughs> and um, I said, oh, S-H-I-T. And they said, big man, you can't do that. Anyway, I went, I get up on the stage, and they had tic-tac-toe. Well, you know, the big red camera, there's a couple million people looking at you. So I put the X in the wrong place, and he said, Ron, if you win this, hell's the truth. And uh, But I actually, I, I won, and I lost the wheel to a, a guy from Jersey City that had a wool sweater on at 90 degrees. And I swear <laughs> to God, I, I never forgot that. But it was a good experience. I still, I just sold the TV. It was a 36 inch TV in '97 with an armoire, and uh, yes. So I just sold it. I sold the Western movie, and there you go. You got that clip? Oh my god! <laughs> we have the clip.
40. Come on, 40. Ron, we didn't know anything about this to your retirement party. <laughs> and, and I think I busted stitches when we were watching that on the film at the at the sports pub. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> but you were actually at the prices right, and it was the funniest thing I had ever seen, man. Hey, hey, hey Horace, we got the big swell up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best time ever. That was hilarious, man. Oh man, it's a lot of and well the best you got, let's ask you coaches, you know, after a after a win or a loss after your game, what do you guys tend to do after the game? Thank hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Anybody can start. You got to steal. I'm going to steal this one from uh, you know, probably all the coaches. You got to go have a couple sodas and reflect on, on the, good, the goods and the bad. A couple sodas, you yes, know? <laughs> okay. The goods and the because you know coaching is different, man. Some people just assume. I think if you win, you're happy. You lose, you're sad. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you be sad. There's been plenty of wins where I've been pissed off, and plenty of losses where I treat it like, like, man, we should have beat them. I, this was a hell of a game. What we do, right. you know? So you have a couple of sodas. You just reflect. I always end up watching the film. You know, I'm just the type of guy I can't go to sleep early anyway. So I'm up, you know, one o'clock in the morning on game night and try to get ready for the next week. Okay, Josh. Is this uh, is this referring back to that? Uh, <laughs> we uh, we lost a scrimmage, I don't know, seven eight years ago, and it was wait wait, wait, wait. you said a scrimmage? <laughs> you didn't say game. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't say game. You said a scrimmage. A scrimmage. A scrimmage. <laughs> talking about practice. Talking, come on, man. We're talking about <laughs> practice. So we lost a scrimmage, and I I was this probably make doesn't you know fits into my psyche a little bit. So I told the coaches, hey, we were going to meet upstairs in the teacher's lounge and uh, to call your wives and tell them it's going to be late. Because it, it was the, the uh, dress rehearsal before week one. So I, I was anticipating us to be a little more put together. We were bad. We went upstairs and uh, the, the night custodian had logged out, put the security alarm on. So about 12.30 in, in the evening or 12.30 a.m., there was a, a German shepherd on about a hundred foot lead, just John at the door trying to get into the teacher's lounge. And uh, Ron had left the room to use the bathroom and he was the one that ran back in and alerted us that the dog, the canine unit was here from the county. So <laughs> I feel like as a coach, uh, I, I can get, you know, I can feel good about a loss if we played well. And, you know, a win's a win, even if it's ugly. And, and you know, I think you, you enjoy that. Um, we usually go to Buffalo Wild Wings uh, where the, the food is bad and the service is worse. But we're, we're usually there Friday nights. <laughs> and uh, – Josh, Josh, Buffalo Wild Wings is one of our sponsors. Sponsors, man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, up for us, man? You can't even find the same people week to week because everybody quits by Thursday. I'd be better off walking the Not the one by Skyline. Y'all are great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Coach Hanson, I, I'd be curious to see what, you know, as I always call you, the legend. You and Bob Belgian are the legends to me. I'd be really curious to know what it's like for you because people think you've been coaching so long that a win's a win's a loss a loss for you the next day. But how, how do you – deal with wins and losses and how you recuperate? Well, I, I like, you know, I mean, I like to go out with the staff after the game. You know, m most of our guys like to go out. Most of them might have, a, you know, have a few sodas. And um, and you just like to unwind about the game. We just like to talk about how everybody did, what, you know, some of the strategies, things that go on. Certainly, certainly after you win, you know, you'd like to be out because if you go home, Either gonna watch the game or, or, or I don't know what you do. You're, right. You're, you're so wound up. So uh, you know you need some time to just decompress, like people say, and just and like talk to the guys that you know that we were coaching that night. And uh, and that's what I like. And um, a loss. There's some that there's been times I I can only go out for a couple minutes. <laughs> I got to get home. I just I just can't talk to anybody. But hopefully, you know, most of the nights I I can recuperate and hash it out that night.
So, uh, Coach Hanson, I know you can remember this because I coached football at WNL from 92 to 99. And I was with uh, Coach Muskin and his staff for all those years. And then Rick Coffin took over. Um, but we used to go to Cowboy Cafe right there on Lee Highway every Friday night, win yeah. or lost. That little tiny little place. Yeah. Wasn't too many brothers in there. Wasn't too many brothers in there. But I was in there with all having a good time, man. Just trying yeah. to be a coach, man. So, Not a very popular place with the brothers. I remember those nights. And then. Having, I was when I first started, I was that guy who had to take those VHS tapes to other <laughs> on Saturday mornings, and Musket would keep me out late, and I still have to get up and go drive the VHS tapes to one of those coaches. So I remember my times, you know, coaching football and and being in those rivals with Yorktown, Wakefield, and all those good times, man. And had to make a decision in '99. I stopped coaching football because I wanted to become a basketball coach and started dedicating myself more to basketball. Yeah. But I, I remember. And, and, you know, Buck coached football at WNL and still does forever. You know, so I think – and that's why Hogwood, when he first got to Wakefield, was like, yo, I need y'all to run my freshman program. Run my like, freshman you know, program, man. Offer still stands. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted us in there, man. But the best we could do for him was just make sure that we were still funneling kids, you know, to football and building the program because at the end of the day, it's, it's one Wakefield, you know. So I, I do remember those days, man. I remember those yeah. days. Well, it was a lot more – get up Saturday morning and then change film is tough, that's for sure. Yeah. Some well, nights. I had to go through it. <laughs> pretty, pretty much you get, them, you get them Friday night nowadays, right? Yeah, right after yeah. the game? Yeah, I'm, I'm just loaded. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. It, it's there in the morning, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let me ask you, do you – is it required? Because in basketball, we don't have to trade tapes. Are you guys still required to trade tapes with the next team? Yeah, we are. Yeah, I think it's. I don't know if it's required, but it's like an etiquette deal, you know. Last two games, man. And yeah. you send them the tape or whatever, because now you can just like people with basketball, they'll say, "Oh, I ain't giving you a tape," but then you go on YouTube, somebody already posted the game or something, so you can get it. Yeah. But you guys are actually required from huddle to send your copies to the coach. Not required, but like you guys said, etiquette to send it to the next coach. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they request an exchange if they get on the huddle first, or if you do, you say, hey, we're waiting on your film, and then you can't watch theirs, and they can't watch yours, and so the exchange has been made. Yeah, but hey, that's how you know who won Friday. Yeah. Because they be on <laughs> early. Right, you know, right. Excuse my life. They be on early, like, asking for the tape at 10 o'clock. Like, y'all must have won, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but some of those guys, and they'll get more than one, two games nowadays. Because all you got to oh, do is ask yeah. the coach, and they'll get it. I'll give you a and plus I, I've been saying that for years everything should just be made available it should just be an open library like if you want my last six games have at them instead of cheating and going to this yeah. guy you got an assistant coach over That's here what they're doing Wayne, anyway. Wayne were you you were at Stonebridge were you, were you so we go out to Stonebridge to play the regional game and that's oh, why yeah. I put Micah in the slot and I would run yep. the Sally and uh I, I put it we hadn't run that play for six weeks they knew it. With the slot, I heard the whole coaching staff from Stonebridge yelling, watch the reverse. I wanted to go across and just hit the <laughs> six of our games. Yeah. 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 Well, let me ask you guys. Now, now this is just a, just a question. I don't know. Has anybody ever sent you a tape from the previous year trying to get over on you? Or have you sent anybody a tape trying to get over on them? Not the previous year, but a couple people used to send some grainy, horrible videos. Like, I've gotten a couple of tapes that started on, like, Play 30 and not Play 1 and things like that. <laughs> yeah, when we went to DVD, there was a game. I think everything was digital for, like, two years. And then we, we definitely got a VHS, VHS game one time. It was very grainy. Yeah. yeah. And then some coaches used uh, – they're creative. They use these numbers. <laughs> They're like certain colors you can't read off of the film, so you don't know who's who. Oh, you mean you can't see their number? Yeah. Number, yes, yeah. coach. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> was, so coach Blue. You can't. <laughs> well, a lot of times you you had a, you didn't have cell phone back then, so they tell yeah. you to meet. And they wouldn't. They oh, I thought it was at eleven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I drove all the way down to Lorton, Virginia. <laughs> that's, that's how, you know, when I first started with Bruce, I remember, Bruce, I remember when you got 
the first time you bought the the DVD burner that burned all the tapes for us. Yeah, yeah. That was a big time because we used to come by, pick them up. He used to leave them in the mailbox. We could burn like the game tape in an hour, like six copies. That was huge. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That was yeah. You thought I thought yeah. It's it's like prehistoric times now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I just got a uh, another text, uh, Ron. I guess it was a question towards you. Uh, they asked me to ask you. Uh, you were a police officer for how many years in Arlington County? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. You retired as a lieutenant, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, for the text, he said, "Could you please ask Ron Fowles, uh what was the reasoning for you cutting your hair to go bald?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> and don't hold back. Tell the story. <laughs> I used to do jump out in the valley, and everything was good. I had this one kid. Well. I used to try to keep my little curl together up top. And uh, we lock up a kid. Um, and I said, he said, that's why everybody calls you Bozo the Clown. And I want <laughs> you to know, I just knew I was the man. I cried for two days. And Frank Ross with the wizard, he took me to the back of the Best Western, took some scissors and came bald. And I came up there, the old lady started going crazy. The rest is history. But they used to call me <laughs> Bozo the Clown. What y'all want me to do first? Oh, 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 o
Josh Shapiro keep us there three hours, man. I just <laughs> I called my wife what I need to do. I said, no, nah, I ain't like Josh. <laughs> go home, man. <laughs> go home. You know, I'd like to say I changed, but you can get me in the right set of circumstances. Look back in the fourth floor. <laughs> but, but, but I can say the hours that these gentlemen put in yeah. is why their programs are where they are right now. I agree. Yeah. It's a lot, lot of hard work and a lot of dedication from you guys. Yeah. And I don't think you guys get as much credit as you do um, for the hours that you put in. And I know you, you definitely get it on the paycheck because you make <laughs> 5000 more than the damn basketball coach. And we got 30 games and y'all got 10. This is some bullshit. I didn't talk to somebody. But <laughs> everybody need a raise. Everybody, everybody need a raise. The coach is a that. whole lot more than just, you know, babysitting. Yes, yes. No, I, and I think with the connections that we have in Arlington County, like you look on this show here, you got Hogwood who played for uh, Files, um, Hogwood who coached with, you know, uh, Coach Hanson, Willis, Shapiro. I think the connection with Arlington County, what people don't understand is, and we try to tell these new coaches that come in, listen, WNL wants to beat Wakefield. Wakefield wants to beat Yorktown. Yorktown. That's all great. Let the fans decide that. But as coaches, we're friends. Yes. We have yeah. our fraternity as coaches, and we try to help each other the best way possible. Some coaches come in not thinking that. And exactly. I think show hopefully will show some light on that, you know, you guys, the football coaches, are all friends to this day, even for Files, who's retired, can yeah. come back on in and have good laughs. And, and yeah. also, too, when we talked about this, we wanted to have the football coaches on. I truly wanted to have my guy, the legend, on here because I don't think Coach Hansen gets so right. much new – that he deserves, man. And so I wanted people to see you, Coach Hanson, and I know your closest friends do, see you as Coach Hanson, man, because I, I can't say it enough. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, Hogwood is one of the guys on this show, man, that talks about you a lot and how much you mean to him. And we have a lot of good conversations about mentors and things like that, man. And, Coach, you know I respect you with the utmost. I told you, you and Bob Belgian are the guys that I really look up to. And so I just wanted people to – you know, be well, thanks able a lot. Thanks well, a lot, Tony. I, yeah, I, I should have done a better job recruiting you in the eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Coach. But look, I say all that to say I, I'm setting you up because I want you to say on camera, because I've heard you say, but I've never heard you say it, that that catch I had against you guys was one of the best catches you've ever seen. It was. Okay, I just and want I to tell you. And I want to tell you, I can remember you as a football player, but I couldn't remember you at all as a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cold. I try to tell my kids to this day, I'm a football guy. In yeah. basketball, I was just faster than everybody. And went. I couldn't play basketball. I had no left hand. But in football, I was okay. I no, was you like, were good. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. You wide receiver. Hey, <laughs> you heard it here on the show today. Coach Hanson says Coach Bentley had the best catch he's ever seen. Did he say it that way? I, I I tell, I'll tell you right now, the best catch I've ever seen in, 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 you, in basketball, I can't remember <laughs> you at all. <laughs> Oh, that's cold. Hey, hey, Buck, I've heard Bruce Hansen talk about you as a running back over my years as well. He might not admit that now, but yeah. <laughs> let, me tell you, let me tell you now, Hogwood, I'm a pulling guard. <laughs> oh, you're running back. I remember you, horse. Huh? I'm a, I'm a pulling guard right now, Bruce. <laughs> oh, you are? Right? What, what? You'd be a good pulling guard. <laughs> hey, wing team, put you in the wing team. Hey, e even with that catch, that catch we had, I had coach. We still lost thirty-two to seven. <laughs> I, I, I didn't I know scored. the score. I, I know scored on coach Hanson. I scored. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Man. <laughs> so, <laughs> with, with that said, coach, you, uh, I think we can wrap up now. I'm honored to have you guys on the show. Uh, this has been great for me as a coach. You know, I know Coach Willis probably feels the same. But uh, having you guys, we continue to follow you guys' careers and just hope the best for everything. And we hope that we get some football going on in, in uh, the fall. So yeah. let me ask you a question, Tony. Thanks for having me today. And, and I really think this is a great idea. How, how can I watch this? How can I watch this? Tell me I how got you. I'm going to send you. I'm gonna send, it's on YouTube. Okay. I'll take care of you. I'll send you some stuff. Now that I know you can text, it's <laughs> great to see you. Bob, Bob Belgian text people because Coach Belgian texts every once in a while. And it's great to see you guys can text. I was happy you responded back, Coach Hans. So okay, well, I got you there, brother. I got you. Thank Josh for that. He's the guy that filled me in. <laughs> Wayne, no, Wayne filled me in. There you go. Yeah. Said, what you. You're the only two coaches in Northern Virginia I like. I tell you that. Right <laughs> yeah. well, I tell you this. I appreciate y'all letting me on here with these legends. Coach yes. Files is always great to see you. 
Just imagine if Arlington County had one football yes. program. Yes. Oh, that's what I said my whole life. I'd be in the system. There would only be one imagine. job out there. Who would be the head coach? Coach Willis and I did a show a couple of days ago on the uh, 1990 basketball team from Wakefield that went all the way to the regional championship and the state uh, tournament, and they had some success. They beat Grant Hill's uh, high school team at yeah. South Lakes. And the theme of some of the questions that we started asking the guys were talking about, man, I wish we only had one high school. And, and I, we laughed about it because I said, if we had one high school, we have a hell of a team. But it'd be guys like me probably were sitting on the bench and all that good stuff. So we laughed about that. So I think our question today with the, with the legends that we have on here, um, if we did have one high school, and I think Coach Hans is probably, you know, one that's been around to remember, remember the Titans, yeah. how that happened. <laughs> if right now they said one high school, in order for this pandemic to go away, we're going to have one high school. <laughs> Who would be the football coach at that one high school? Look, I'm, I'm the youngest. I'm if they go to one high school. So <laughs> those two guys. I'm the youngest. As long as somebody hired me on the staff for the full stipend, I'm good. There you go. <laughs> That's an easy question, Tony. It's uh, it's it's Mac Brown. And, yes. And and I better have one hell of an interview, and I'll run his special teams. <laughs> well, if I if they go to one high school, I'm retiring. <laughs> and I'm going to give you an extra fact. Hey, Buck, that's breaking news. That's Bruce too, much, said too, much, too, much, uh, too much pressure to win. Bruce Hansen said he would retire if we go to one high school. That's breaking news. <laughs> that's breaking news. <laughs> oh, well, man. Bruce, well, let me ask you, Let me ask you, Bruce. Like, you, let, when you said you would retire, so who would you hand, hand, uh, hand the, the realms over to? Ah. Uh, no, I'm not, Are you I mean, kidding me? Ah. You got to pass it over <laughs> to one of these young coaches, Coach. Uh-huh. You got to pass it to one of these young guys here on, on this. We're not worried about the old guy. Yeah, He'll yeah. come up from Florida every once in a while, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm not answering that. Well, let me, okay. Okay. He's the best running back. And you guys <laughs> off. Let, Coach, let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase it. When you do step down on your own, however you want to do it, and that's how you should be able to do it, when you walk into the sunset, okay. would you have any say-so with who you think, whether it's private or public, would you have any say so? Who you think would ha would take over the program? I'm not answering that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask you to tell me who, Coach. I said, would you like to have I, say so? I, I I don't know if my AD would want my input. I, well, I'll leave it at that. Which is crazy. It, wow, that's so crazy. <laughs> hey, hey, Bruce, this is this is a nice family show. You being very politically correct. <laughs> I learned that from you. <laughs> yeah. I, I bet you one thing is true. If Bruce, when and if he retires when he on his own accord, you will not attend an invited guest. What's that? Can I say that again? He will not attend another game until he's invited as a guest, meaning he's winning an award, because there's no way you're going to watch that team be coached by somebody else. It's going to Yeah, well, that's, I don't know. I, I haven't crossed that bridge. I'm worried Bruce, about the pandemic. Bruce is not <laughs> retiring. <laughs> no. He's been he's been I telling us he's retired. He's gonna retire in three years for 35 years. <laughs> no. In, in 1991, he's retired. He said, "This is a, this is a, I thought you were gonna retire after MJ when you guys went play Stonebridge." Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, yeah, I thought that then. But then Bruce, you had to do some more recruiting, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a good recruiter. I would have got Wayne playing for me, man. <laughs> no, I think you, you had a good quarterback then. You had was Stacy with you then? No, oh, no, he's older. Oh, they, 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 they won the region that year, though. Who was the quarterback of your team when you played, Wayne? Well, that's that's what you told me back in the day. Was good coaching because uh, it was uh, Olafont, but he broke his hand. So crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. The Olafont got hurt. Right. And Creedon, Creedon took over and y'all won oh, the region. Yeah, that was Pat good. That year. He said that was good coaching. That was good coaching. <laughs> yeah. That'll hey, probably be the first guy watching the show, too, Creedon. <laughs> so, 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 Wayne, you, though. Wayne, you have two district or conference championships. Josh, you three. have one or two? I got three. You have three? Oh, yes, wow. Whoa, Wayne, easy, big man. <laughs> Slow down, Wayne. I got Slow before, down, Wayne. before the great Noel Deskins retired, she gave us they they put the credit in for 2014. 
I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I've got one. one. And I bet you don't even know, Bruce. You've won so many. Well, I, I, district championships? District. I, I don't really know. Now. Yeah. 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 But you, get, you, get, you probably have two regionals, three regionals? Two regionals. Two regionals. Well, oh, we're going to have 88. Four. That means Bruce is 88, 99. 88-99. Yep. Lost three times in the region finals. Okay. My bad. From senior year. I blew it twice on the defensive side, man. Back to back. Four. Who's it? Which games were those? South County and Stonebridge. We gave up yeah, 69. South was pretty good. <laughs> Stonebridge was pretty good, right? Like, <laughs> hey, wait. Pretty Stonebridge good. got six guys in the pros. <laughs> Dude, man, but we had them. We had them. We were, so we're, we're going out there to play, play that game, and it was during the day. And they put us in the side locker room, and they had Jonathan Allen walking by our kids with yeah, his shirt walking off. back and forth in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, I said, put your pads on, goddamn. <laughs> he, I said, you, oh, we're too scared to go out and play after seeing that guy. Oh, oh. that was like the uh, the first Westfield team. Hey, Bruce, you remember the team when we used to draft the schedules, and uh, you know the leagues was there was only sixteen teams in the whole league, and Westfield was new. I said, man, we're gonna get him. We could get this team. Man, we went out there. They got nine. Evan Royster, Eddie Royal, Sean Glennon. Sean Glennon. They had nine pros. They had, where you remember that? They had they, nine pros. How did you get them on your schedule? No, two years in a row. First, they got, yeah, they first, first opened up. Two? two years in a row. Asshole. That's good, Coach. Uh, they had three pro players transfer in there somehow. I remember, I remember they came to Wakefield, and they had, like, five or six buses. And I thought it was fans. And they're like, no, that's for the team. <laughs> for real. Hey, Josh, that, remember that was with Centerville. Remember that when well, Centerville came the year they won the championship? Yeah. And, uh, they got off the bus and they came by the locker room. There was only like 45 kids. I said, Josh, we got him tonight. We got him tonight. <laughs> All of a sudden, 70 kids come from behind the bleachers. <laughs> and they marched like Roman soldiers. <gasps> I said, oh, hell. Oh, hell. <laughs> the, the kids are running to the locker room. The poop never tasted so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Buck, any other questions? Or, uh... Oh, man. man look, I had a good time with these legends, man. Was, this, was, this was it. This was really good. This, this was great. Hey, hey uh, Tony and Buck, say, thanks a lot. You know, you guys, my brothers, it's great for what you're doing during this time. I heard it from people up there. Uh, Bruce. Uh, you know, the mentor all the years, a great man. Josh, you know, me and Josh are brothers. And uh, Wayne, you know, you're my son for always. And I told Wayne, like you said, he was a, a, a sophomore, weighing 125 pounds, should have been the starting quarterback. His mama said, you better not put my boy back there. And, uh, <laughs> you still argue and, about that. I was yeah, ready. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but I told him he'd be the coach. And you guys, it's a blessing and an honor to be connected with you guys, even though I'm 980 miles away. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank it's you, great to see you, Coach. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if I may for a second, I appreciate it, too. I didn't get a chance to thank Tony and Buck for this. Um, and, again, you know, I think Willis is a guy that goes way under the radar too often. And yes. In 2013, there's no way we win the district uh, yeah. without him, especially the week leading up to our, the, the district final game. Um, he counseled me on something – that he saw saw differently than I did, and fortunately, I realized don't be headstrong. Listen to your guy here; he knows what he's talking about, and I followed his directions, and it worked out really well for us. Um, so, Buck, you're way too humble, and you yeah. far too frequently um, are more than willing to sit behind the scenes when, when in fact, you know, in 2013, I think you and Tony won the won the region too. Correct? Yep. Yeah, so no, 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 no. We won it in 14, 14. Well, the 2013. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, 13, 14. Yes, right. yes, we did. I'm sorry. The point is, like, the common denominator oftentimes is uh, is Willis. And, you know, <laughs> he won't take an interview from Fascinoli and doesn't like when I call him out on stuff. But, you know, I mean, just extremely fortunate to have guys like Willis and Files on staff and, of course, learn from uh, – Bruce at Yorktown, I marvel at your longevity and success, Bruce. Um, you know, the, the season's a grind. The, the, the hardest part for me is is literally January to July. That that part to me just wears me out. 
you know, um, the football coaching's easy, but as far as the off season, that stuff's a grind. So the fact that you've, you've uh, endured all that for as many years and has been as successful as you have and coached as many great kids, it's, it's you know. Well, thanks an awful lot, Josh. You know, yeah. Good. And good then man. I'm not done with Wayne. I mean, Wayne's the new kid on the block. Don't buy it. You know, don't, <laughs> I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. The guy can fly out the coat. You know, uh, just like, you know, the, I want to beat Bruce. Bruce wants to beat me. We all want to beat Wayne, and Wayne wants to beat us. But the bottom line is Wayne's beaten us three straight years in a row, and we've been dead on equal with talent. So some of that has been great coaching. So, you know, Wayne, you've you done a tremendous job in seven years at Wakefield. And that's, that's all you and great for the community. And good yes. for Arlington. So, yes. You know, great for Arlington. It's you know, also, Josh, you've done a hell of a job at Covey Nail. Yes, sir. Since you've been here. Really mm -hmm. have. So, hey, hey, Wayne, how many years did you coach with us? I, I, I think I was 08 with you. Now I've been at Wakefield uh, seven. And I've had uh, the greatest opportunity of everybody, you know, being a young guy. <clears throat> I got to grow up and watch some of these programs. You know, when I was a kid, I played arms and football. It was at Yorktown when they had two fields. Oh. So you grew up. Friday nights practicing and they coming out with the cleats on the concrete. Everybody wanted to go to Yorktown and they were winning, you know, and then I got a chance to play for coach files and taking a lot of lessons. And he helped me beyond, you know, Wakefield talked to him many times when I was playing at Shenandoah and those things. And then I got to also thank Bruce for giving me opportunity to be a, a coach when I came back because everyone I knew was gone. You know, I came to Wakefield coach files had, had left. And, and Did you ever you told us that you were the defensive coordinator there? The yeah, so, so I got to go over there, and, and you're the one that talked me into running D. You know, I never – I played D for five, games, right, four yeah. five games. <laughs> <laughs> but I also got to thank Josh, too. You know, he's always been helpful for everything I needed, giving me, you know, magazines, words of wisdom, coaching points and advice, you know, whether I was on his staff or not. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, when I first took over at Wakefield, Josh ran a clinic. He used to run a clinic with the Arlington youth yeah. to try to get more kids out interested. And he invited me and Bruce over. That's probably the only picture with all three Arlington coaches at one yeah, time working at a true. clinic together, that's you true. know, just for the benefit of the kids in the county. Nobody knew what school those kids are going to go to. You know, yeah. somebody's going to get them, but we were all out there working together. And that, I believe that was the same time we talked about playing each other. We've all agreed to always play each other because, you know, I grew up with that rivalry and they've always been a part of it. Yeah. And, and so we are not no longer in the same district. You know, I'm not even in their conference anymore. I'm actually just now moving up to 6A. Uh, with Yorktown and WNL because of enrollment, but we have uh, been grandfathered in to play each other all three teams every year because we reached out to VHSL and made that happen. You know, so these are great guys and a chance to be around, and, and nothing makes a rivalry better than having respect and a friendship with the guys you want to go, you know, battle and play against and, and try to beat. You know, so it's, it's been amazing for me as a coach. Well, let, me ask you, let me ask you something real quick, Wayne. You said you guys came together for a clinic and you didn't know what school these guys were going to. How many of those guys did Bruce recruit to Yorktown? <laughs> Great question. I got to go back and look at the roster. <laughs> How they probably probably ended up over there somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, we you know, we hit, we got a good drama department over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, Coach Hans, oh. Coach Hans, I feel your pain, man, because every time we win, everybody, you know, somebody always says, Wakefield recruited, Wakefield recruited. <laughs> hey, man, I feel your pain, it's Coach Hans. It's true in basketball, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a great sign language program. <laughs> and, Tony, oh. thanks for running this, man. You're yeah. real Hey, cool. no, Good hey, job. again, when you guys look at this, the name of this show is called The Buck and Tony Show. Again, Buck is the guy that does all this stuff, man. I'm just a figurehead. <laughs> Buck is the one that does everything, man, behind the scenes. Yeah, and like you said, great. doesn't great. worry about any credit. He's been with me as an assistant coach before I can remember. He's been with you as an assistant coach. And like I said, but I did tell Buck, and he knows this. When I got the job at Wakefield, I said, Buck, I want you to come with me. He said, well, what about Bobby, man? The w, and I said, Bobby already gave us the blessings. Let's go down Wakefield, take over. We'll be fine. So he said, okay. I said, then, Buck, I want you to remember this. When we win it, Everybody gonna say, "Oh, Tony Bentley, hey!" <laughs> but when we losing, they gonna all say, "Say Tony Bentley." Hey. So, yeah. right? Fuck, you don't ever have to worry about nobody saying your name. So you keep doing what you're doing, big man, because I love you. I ain't letting you go. I got, I got some pictures on you, so I ain't letting you go anyway. <laughs> hey, I got plenty of pictures of fouls. <laughs>
in my pool, baby, in my pool. <laughs> it's pool time. Hey, so I just want to thank you guys again. I don't, we thanked each other enough, and I, I hope that people get a chance to see this. And we'll have it out. And to just to see the, the camaraderie and the love that we as coaches have for one another. At the end of the day, it is about the kids and, and trying to better our programs, and I think we've, we're all doing that. And, you know, of course, Coach Hans has been doing it longer than I was born. Um, <laughs> so, so I thank you guys for coming on today and just sharing your story. And hopefully we'll have you guys back on again and continue this relationship. And uh, go Wakefield. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go, go Bucks, baby. Let's go Bucks, baby. You know the bad way. You go Bucks. Oh, man. No, no. Uh, you guys have been great, man. We them boys. <laughs> no, no state income tax. <laughs> no state hey, income tax. And, oh, my wife said, don't tell you where I live. Listen, <laughs> I did that. This is not a police show, babe. Don't worry about it. And, <laughs> hey, 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 coach, it's real good. I can tell you, well, we get to the Florida part because you ain't seen no football players. You've been down here. Oh, I believe that. But listen, hey, 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 Tony. Yeah. You know, they open up down here. They have a high school football down here. They don't get masks, no masks. They play that here. So you guys can bring your teams down. You can quarantine in my house, and y'all can play a round robin, and I'll ship your asses back to Virginia. Yeah, we might have to do that. Um, <laughs> all right. Hold on, hold on.